what to do and what not to do if the carrier you're working for files bankruptcy or even closes while you're on the road. Coming up. Hello and welcome to Trucking Answers. I'm Mark, your do and do not host. As we know recently, Saladon Trucking apparently is going to file Chapter 11 bankruptcy and there's been tons of talk on the internet already about what to do, do this, don't do this, go take your truck, don't take the truck, drive it home. Let's talk about things you should do and things that you absolutely should not do because you could get uh, it could hurt your career, all right? And it just isn't the right thing to do. A number of drivers were concerned online because they had money on their fuel card. They get paid on some kind of company card, whatever, I've done videos about this. Please do not ever at any company, at any time, get paid on their card, never. Mark, I don't have a bank account. Fine. Go to a box store, get a prepaid visa that you can get direct deposited to. There are those. They charge, you know, a couple dollars, five dollars a month, ten dollars, whatever it is. Get paid on a card that you own, either a bank account or a prepaid card. Why? Just for this reason. There are people I saw post yesterday have five thousand dollars on this card and they couldn't access the card because at points the card was turned off. Sometimes it was on. Here's the thing. Get that paid yourself. Do not ever, ever get paid on a company card. If you have money on a company card, wherever you are, I don't care what the company is, go get it off of there immediately. Get your own card to get uh, money put on. Never get paid on a company card. Do fuel with no hours. All right, so I saw this post too. I'm here, they turn the cards back on, but I don't have any hours to fuel. Fuel the truck, okay? Eat the log violation later. Don't worry about a minor violation like a fueling violation. Go fill up that truck while the card is on. So even if you don't have hours, go fill up your truck. You don't know how much longer the card is gonna be on because a company that is in turmoil like this, the card can come, it can go. We don't know what's gonna happen with it. If the card works, fill up the truck, worry about the log violation later. If the company closes, do not take the truck home and then put this lien on it that people are talking about. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. You cannot put a lien on the truck. You're an employee. Keeping the truck uh, for payment like that, like one person said, oh, I'll charge them $175 a day. Okay, you can't make a contract with them after the fact. That's not allowed. Keeping the truck is conversion, right? And I have to say, I'm not a lawyer, okay? Go see a lawyer for specifics. Theft is the wrongful taking of property, pro property, property, okay? Conversion, right, is uh, taking someone's property rights away from them, basically. So you had the right to the truck while well, you work there. If you, for some reason, don't work there like the company closes, like Falcon did, you don't get to keep the truck and then charge uh, storage for it because you didn't have that agreement in writing in advance. There's no contract. You can't enforce it later. Otherwise, every driver that doesn't get their final paycheck, why don't they put a lien on the company's building? Why? Because they're not allowed to do that. Okay, why don't they uh, you know, do that kind of thing? They don't because they're not allowed to. You can't keep the truck and put a lien on it. If a company closes with you on the road, take the truck to their nearest property, that kind of thing. You don't get to keep it and put a lien on it. Please, please don't do that. Don't think you can do it. You can't do it. That leads me to this, driving after a company closes. So if you're on the road and a company closes completely and they go, we're out of business, there's a the thought, can you drive the truck back to the property? Well, is there insurance? Well, maybe. If you for sure know there's no insurance, then park the truck uh, at a truck stop or something like that safe. Don't leave it on the side of the road. Don't leave it on the shoulder of a road, someplace like that. Go to somewhere where the truck is parked safely. Otherwise, would I drive it home? I would, if it had fuel, I would drive it back to wherever it goes and say, I don't, I'm not an insurance expert, all right, that kind of thing. That's me personally. I think once a company closes, you're no longer an employee there though. If they completely shut down, you don't work there anymore because there's no company to work for and you have no further obligation to bring the truck back. It is a convenient way to get back. Do always have money to get yourself home, all right? So this is a perfect example of this. You always need at least access to a few hundred bucks, all right, so that you can get yourself back, worst case scenario, on the Greyhound from the farthest point in the U.S. to wherever you live, all right? Now, right now, there's a ton of people in Facebook groups, including myself, 
who are offering rides to drivers if they're in the area and can't get back. It seems that Celadon has turned the cards back on for a while. We don't know how long that'll last. Not sure what's gonna happen that way. They don't know if they're out of business. They haven't said that. Chapter 11 is reorganization, but uh, say you can't get a ride home or whatever, it's a small place, there's not all this help like that. You need to be able to get yourself home, you know, from the other side of country, $300 should cover you to get you home and feed yourself. Always have access to that kind of money. Right now, there's a feeding frenzy of recruiters, as you can imagine on the Celadon page, on all these other Facebook group pages for Celadon, just everywhere, come and see me. And you know who the biggest ones are? Drivers, why? Because they want the money for themselves. You'll notice I don't recruit for my company, okay? I don't, you won't find that anywhere here where I'm recruiting for my company. I'm trying to give this information to people. I don't recruit. There's tons of drivers. Oh, come work here. Give them my name. Work here. They're just like vultures. They just drop in. Be very careful about listening to these people. Don't just jump at the first place that shines something, uh, you know, shiny in front of you that waves it out there in front of you. Do some research, you know, take at least a full day if you want to and just sit down and research exactly every company. You should always be ready to jump ship anyway. I am, even though I've been at my place for years, I know the first couple places I would apply to right away. If there was a problem, you should too, okay? Be very careful. Don't just jump because somebody will give you a ride somewhere, all right? Work that out and get the job that's right for you. Be careful about these driver recruiters. There's tons of them out there, right? Ignore most of them. Now, we should all help each other, but there's now popping up GoFundMe's from drivers. Oh, I need a few money to get home. I need, uh, you know, I need this. We're not going to pay, be able to do this. There are groups like the St. Christopher Fund, which I'm working uh, for this month to collect donations, which I have been before this. Use a legitimate group and donate money there. These GoFundMes, unfortunately, some of them may or may not be accurate. The people could use the money from whatever. And I, and I know people say, well, at least I give it to somebody. Okay. But just be very careful that these are popping up and people are scamming others in the name of this kind of thing. Same way at a truck stop. So a driver comes up and says, oh, can you give me 20 bucks? I work for selling on, I'm out of money or whatever. Okay, be very careful about that. If they're hungry, go in and buy them a meal or whatever like that, something like that. And if they won't accept that, you know that it's a scam if they're only taking money. So just be very careful. The scammers are always out in this. I wish they would put as much effort into bettering themselves and getting a job as they do into scamming other people. But unfortunately, that's probably not going to happen. Now, some people said they would quit and go into their 401k. I say no, do not use your 401k money. If you take 401k money early before you're what, 59 and a half, there's a penalty on it. If you need it, right, you're going to lose your house. That's one thing, but try to find some other way. When you work at another company, you can transfer the 401k into their 401k or do some kind of self-directed IRA. IRA. Talk to a financial person at the new place about that. Don't just get that money as a check to you though, because there are penalties and interest, uh, well penalties, right, that you have to pay on an extra penalty if you take it out early. So be very careful about saying, oh, I have this money in a 401k, all right, be careful about that. Don't think like that's a buffer zone for you unless it's a total emergency like we're gonna be put out in the street. There are internet groups to help you. Use the internet to your advantage, but just be careful what people are saying on there. Look it over. If you need a ride, there are people willing to give ride, and that's not just here in the Celadon thing. That's everywhere. Use the internet to your advantage, but be careful of people scamming you. you. Use my name, call this place, you know, we'll do this for you. Be careful about that. Take your time if you're looking for another job. So as of right now, apparently the few cards are back on at Celadon. So, uh, but that can come and go at any time. It seems to go back and forth. They're asking people to fill and not quit. Apparently they're gonna do chapter 11. We will see what happens this coming week. That's the latest information, but that's what I would say too, to get the loads back. I don't know what's gonna happen with them. Their stock was really, really low on Friday, 41 cents. In fact, really low. We'll be talking about this more on my live show, which is every Monday at 1 p.m. Please be on there tomorrow, sell it on drivers, of course. You're welcome to come in there and uh, ask questions. We have a ton of people in there, very experienced people in there that will be more than happy to answer questions that are best of your of uh, their abilities, As uh, uh, in fact. So that's the story for right now, some do's and don'ts. Be very careful out there what you do next. Your next choices, uh, you know, can determine the rest of your career, all right? So be careful about it and uh, just be safe for the moment, all right? If you have to sit today because nobody will answer you, it's a Sunday, all right? Take some time, sit there, think about what you're gonna do next, 
and uh, you know get information that you need and then make a decision on where to go make a good decision not just the first place that says we'll take you okay don't just go like that make a good choice and uh, you won't have any problems there's at least a ton of jobs out there for people to get into we'll see you on the live show on monday and uh, we'll be back soon with more trucking answers